Welcome back to H3 Weapon Deep Dive. We are on to the battle rifles, and we're starting off strong with the Galil AR. Wait a minute, Galil starts with G. Why is it at the beginning? Well, consistency. What do you need that for? Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. 762 by 51 millimeter. NATO firing the big, big NATO cartridge here. There we go. Kind of looks like an AK, doesn't it? Wonder why that is. What else we got going on? Well, we got a folding stock. We got a carry handle. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. You can carry it around by the handle. Isn't that cool? All right. Enough fooling around. Let's get serious. Let's check it out. Let's check out the controls. Very AK controls on this guy. Let's start with the folding stock, though. Grab it on the butt pad and give it a fold to the right side. There you go. It does not extend or contract. All you get is a fold. Got your bolt handle on the right side. Got to take it off safe in order to pull it back. Left on the track pad will do that. That'll put you into full auto. One more will put you into semi-auto and one more will put you back to safe. Helps we have a magazine. Let's see what we got here. 25 round magazine. There we go. Now we're ready to shoot. Ooh, full auto on this thing is kind of banana pants. Semi-auto is a little more manageable. Uh, barely. Uh, down on the trackpad will not eject the magazine, and we do not have a magazine release, so you cannot do the tactical reload, even though it's got that AK look to it. No. Oh well. So much for that. What else we got on here? Well, we got our carry handle. <laughs> yeah! We got a flappy flappy carry handle on this guy. You can flip it and flap it, and you can also grab it and carry the firearm that way. Also is good at getting in the way of your shot, so that's fun. Make sure you flip that over. Uh, what else we got? We got a bipod! Super cool! Now you're ready for some serious recoil reduction. Oh, so click with your trigger to deploy and undeploy the bipod and just press it uh, near any surface or get it near any surface, I should say, and it kind of automatically sticks to it like that. Now, the trick with bipods is you do not want to grab the foregrip because then it just becomes a regular gun like that. You've got to not grab the foregrip area and just hold it back and then then you get your recoil reduction. Moving on to attachments. Well, let's see what we've got in the rail department. And the answer is zero Picatinny rails. However, you can see it right there. We've got that Russian dovetail mount. So you can actually put optics and of course the Russian to, where is it? My Russian, there it is. My Russian to Picatinny rail adapter. So you can put on your Picatinny style optics that way. What else do we have on here? Let's check the barrel. Muzzle brake. Muzzle brake will go. Suppressor. Suppressor will go. Fantastic. Barrel extension will go. And the rail adapter for the barrel will go as well. All important battle spatula. Yes, battle spatula will go. I don't believe there's any special bayonets for this one. Foregrip will not magically go there, but that's okay. Stock, we already got a stock. Let's take a look at our iron sights. This actually has some of the best iron sights in the game as far as I'm concerned. They are super simple too. Like, why doesn't everybody do this? Why? So you've got a little front post there with a circular protective ring. You've got a round aperture on the back, which come to think of it does look kind of fragile. But anyway, you just line them up circle to circle and you're good to go. Let me actually put some bullets in here so I can show you what I'm talking about. There we go. Ooh, tracking problems. So as you can see, I'm shooting a little low. Well, click on there and get the second aperture and it actually shoots a little better. So the second aperture I find is a little higher and actually works better for short range. Doesn't seem like it's exactly zero though. I don't know, it's not quite exact. I gotta get up a little bit on this guy. 
still pretty good. Let's look at the other sights. So if you throw a Russian red dot on it, it lines up with the irons and you kind of have to co-witness this sucker. Even that red dot is a little low, just a little bit. Uh, but that works okay. Let's check out the PSO scope. Ah, now as you can see the PSO is to the left of the irons and actually gets out of the way and is not a problem. So the PSO is a good choice there for long range. Now this comes in the spawner, in the old spawner, and does not naturally fit anywhere on the Galil, so I don't know why it's in there. You would have to, you would have to use the Russian Picatinny adapter and then throw this on there. And now you're kind of, okay, it gets up there, but man, you're way off bore. I guess you could use that, but I don't know why that's in there. Should have put a PSO in there. Recoil test. Here we go. The first battle rifle recoil test. Fully automatic. 25 rounds. 7.62 by 51 NATO. <laughs> this is going to be interesting. Here we go. Well... Okay, started with the 10, that's good. Then a lot of fives, fours, fives. Now we started drifting off there around the 15 round. Yeah, and then we drifted off the paper. So these two are gonna probably, if they miss the target, let's see, oh, we got 25 on the target. So they all got on the paper, these were zeros. So 3.24 average, not great, but this is a beastly round for full automatic. So the fact that we got some fives on there, it's okay. It's about what you expect. All right, three, two, four to beat. Let's try it with the muzzle brake. Woo, three, two, four to beat. We got six, two, four. Huge improvement with the muzzle brake. Look at that. That's actually respectable. That's in the range of uh, 762 by 39, an AKM style round. So, wow, that's, that's enormous improvement. Moving on to the suppressor. Ooh, five, two, four. <laughs> I love these averages. They're hilarious. So kind of in the middle of there. Better than, uh, better than stock. That's for sure. A lot better than stock. Not as good as the muzzle brake. So... Pretty typical there, in terms of what we would expect. Now let's try it with the bipod. Woo! Seven, five, two with the bipod. As you can imagine, that's a gigantic improvement. Oh, right off the bat, we can hit the nine ring. Oh, look at that. That's so good. All right, bipod and muzzle brake. Oh, laser beam, 9.4. Wow. So even with the bipod, the muzzle brake makes a huge improvement. Put a muzzle brake on this sucker. Bipod and suppressor. Woo, 856. Also excellent results. Excellent results. Are you curious what it'll do in semi-auto? I am. Let's see what it'll do in semi-auto. Nothing on the barrel. Let's just use the laser for sighting. Ooh, jumping all over the place. But look at all the nines and tens. Nine, two, four. Yeah, look at all that. Tens and nines, tens and nines. We didn't start getting eights until almost the end of the magazine. That's... Pretty good. You can see it's a lot lower rate of fire than full auto, but at least you can hit something. Semi-auto with that special muzzle brake? Yeah, let's see what we get. Ooh, drifted out at the end. Eight, nine, six. Still really good. Didn't seem to improve as much as when it was full auto. He had a lot of eights and eight and eights and nines in there, so it actually didn't really improve much over the stock when in semi-auto with the muzzle brake. 
One last one, semi-auto with a suppressor. Hmm, oh, 872. Felt a really jumpy, but I guess those jumps were at least in the eight ring and not like off the paper like they were in full auto. There you have it, the Galil AR in 7.62 by 51 NATO, 25 rounds of full automatic mayhem, or switch it to semi and actually hit something. Till next time, I will see ya. Yeah, it still shoots a little low. tracking ah just get him down range <laughs>